Welcome back to Letterman Row. It's Andy Backstrom. It's Spencer Holbrook, and we have breaking news. Um, shocking, crazy, wild news on a Wednesday afternoon, the Wednesday of spring break for Ohio State. Tony Alford, Ohio State running backs coach, is leaving the program to become the next running backs coach at the University of Michigan, crossing rivalry lines, going north of the of the state line, and becoming the Wolverines' new running backs coach. Andy, um, we're processing this in real time. There are stories being uh, run in real time. Obviously, um, you know, we'll be distracted as we do this, but we're just here to break it all down. W initial reaction to Tony Alford leaving Ohio State to become the Michigan running backs coach. Yeah, Tony Alford leaving earlier this offseason wouldn't have been totally surprising. He didn't receive an extension this offseason, but leaving for Michigan is incredibly surprising. I mean, if you're a player, you just don't transfer to Michigan from Ohio State. If you're a coach, you typically don't see a coach going from Ohio State to Michigan or Michigan to Ohio State. So anything within this rivalry is usually out of bounds uh, as far as one player or coach going to the other team. But here we go. Tony Alford leaving for Michigan and, you know, Sharon Moore is building out this staff over time as Jim Harbaugh has left for the NFL. And now you have Tony Alford, who's seemingly part of that staff. And, and I guess for Ohio State, it's really confusing, uh, I guess, from the outside perspective, because if you're not knowing what's inside the building, you look at this running back room and you see two of the best running backs in the country and Quinshawn Judkins, who comes in from Ole Miss, and then Travion Henderson, who's returning. And you think, well, that's probably the best running back duo in the country. Why is Tony Alford leaving? But there's always more to the story than that. There's certainly always more to the story than that. Uh, that's why we're here. We're going to break it all down. We're going to break down the recruiting side. We're going to break down what this means uh, for Ohio State. The longest tenured offensive uh, assistant, Ryan Day, has never hired a running backs coach because Tony Alford's always been there. He was hired immediately following um, Ohio State's national championship in 2014-15. He gets hired the offseason of 2015, comes in and gets to coach Ezekiel Elliott for a year. Um now, immediately following Michigan's national championship, Tony Alford is leaving Ohio State to become the Michigan running backs coach. He's done a trifecta now, um, which I don't know has ever been done. I'm going to do a lot of research on this. Has any coach ever been the, the a position coach or any coach at Notre Dame, Ohio State, and Michigan? Um, he might be the first. He's not the first, though, Andy, and I think this is important context. This is not like an unprecedented situation. Um, you know, Ohio State, Ryan Day's first staff, Ryan Day went and hired Al Washington. Um, from Michigan. He went and hired Greg Madison from Michigan. You know, Bo Schimbeckler was an assistant under Woody Hayes at Ohio State and was hired to become the head coach at Michigan. So, like, it's not entirely unprecedented. It's still just jarring and, like, shocking to see this happen. And I think it is a little unprecedented in a way just because, you know, those hirings of Al Washington and, and uh, Greg Madison happened in, in January, if I'm not mistaken, maybe even December. This is in the middle of spring practice. Ohio State started spring practice last week. It's two practices in already. We're in the middle of spring break. And now Ohio State needs a running backs coach. Like This is absolutely wild. Yeah, and so much has already happened with this coaching staff this offseason. A lot of, you know, significant turnover for a team that won 11 games. And especially, you know, you have the moves, special teams coordinator eliminating that position. You have – some of the moves on the defensive side of the ball, Perry Eliano was retained. You bring in Matt Guerrero, and then you bring in an offensive coordinator, which was the biggest hire of all. You first hire Bill O'Brien, and then you hire Chip Kelly to be the next guy up after Bill O'Brien takes the head coaching job at Boston College. So there's been a lot of changes this offseason. And, of course, Ryan Day relinquishing play calling duties now to Chip Kelly and taking a step back from that. So from an 11-win season, I know obviously it ended not the way Ohio State would have wanted it to, but – even for that, just a lot of changes. And this is the next change of several now, and they need to define a running backs coach. But as we were talking about before the show, I mean, this is a position that won't necessarily be too crazy hard to fill because, hey, you get to work with Travion Henderson, you get to work with Quinshaw Judkins. And like we said, like that might be the best running back duo in the entire country. So, yes, you have to poach someone from another staff at this point. You are in spring ball. That is not an ideal situation. That being said, your deck is kind of stacked because you've got two of the best running backs in the country. Oh, and by the way, three others that are pretty darn good too, and at least have quite a bit of potential. So let's, let's talk about this. Tony offered a lot of good, some bad um, people will point to the recruiting holes. People will point to um, the success on the field. Obviously coach JK Dobbins to a 2000 yard season, coach Ezekiel Elliott to a thousand yard season uh, in, tw in 2015. 
um, his first with the program. Uh, Mike Weber, 1,000 yards. Um, you can give him a lot of credit for Mayan Williams because he found Mayan Williams. But the only reason he found Mayan Williams is, by the way, he lost out on B. John Robinson, who was silently committed to Ohio State, doesn't pick Ohio State. Uh, Jordan Lyle, almost the same way in this in this last class. Ohio State still ends up with a couple good backs, but the class wasn't as good as it could have been. The inconsistencies on the recruiting trail showed up at times, I think, in the running back room um, at Ohio State the last few years. But Tony Alford's a, a really good position coach. Like, we're not going to sit here and bash Tony Alford because he went to Michigan. Like, that's not what we do here. Fans can do that, and that's fine. Um, I've already seen some comments calling him a traitor, and I'm assuming that um, when he walks out of the tunnel in November, it's going to be um, not pretty for him. But, you know, this is a pretty good position, Coach Andy, and we'll start with the good here. Um, he did a really nice job at Ohio State, and there will be some criticism, obviously, especially of the recruiting side. But you also can't really discount the good that Tony Alford's done uh, at Ohio State during his nine years. Yeah, and a bridge from the Urban Meyer era to the Ryan Day era. And I think that's been important to kind of carry over that success of those two different head coaches. And, you know, Tony Alford's been someone who's been an assistant head coach at Ohio State, someone that's had a lot of leadership role in the offensive side of the ball. Um, and, and those running backs you mentioned, a lot of them have had great success. I mean, J.K. Dobbins went over 2,000 yards and Travion Henderson now is, you know, he could have very well left for the NFL draft and been, you know, a, a round two or round three selection. And Maya Williams is probably someone who's going to be picked up somewhere as an undrafted free agent. And, you know, you have Trey Sermon that they get from the transfer portal, had a great year in 2020. There's been a lot of talent, maybe not quite as much as people would like, uh, considering the pedigree of Ohio State and considering the guys they had, like Ezekiel Elliott, and J.K. Dobbins, I guess of late, you might be asking for more. But certainly now you get, you know, Quinshaw Judkins in the transfer portal this offseason to go with Travion Henderson. I mean, those are two NFL guys right there. I mean, that might have been just the best kind of crop that Tony Alford has had. So certainly recruiting missteps, I guess you could say, over the last few years, but also a huge recruiting win with Quinshaw Judkins, which was probably one of the biggest transfer portal splashes of the entire offseason. And, you know, maybe something that helped him kind of stay on staff at this point, you know, to, to be able to have a shot to be with the Buckeyes this season. But then ultimately now turning the page and, and going to Michigan for what seems to be a little bit more security and longevity uh, or just a change of pace, you know, just just a switch up for sure. Hearing that it's going to be a three year deal at Michigan, I think that's a little bit more security than maybe he had at Ohio State, especially considering some of the things that could have happened this this past offseason when Ryan Day was going undergoing some pretty significant changes on the Ohio State coaching staff. Um, yeah, I, I thought that there were times where you could really see the development working with Tony Alford. And, you know, you look at Mayan Williams, I thought he got better. You know, the injuries obviously slowed him down. He got better as his career went on. I thought, uh, you know, there were times where I thought Mike Weber looked really good. There were times where, you know, you could see that J.K. Dobbins was developing, even though you kind of look back at his freshman year and it's like, well, he was probably that good all along. Um, but, you know, Tim May is, 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 but knows this better than anybody. And again, we're reacting to this in, uh, in real time, we're kind of just trying to process exactly how this happened. If you if you haven't seen it, uh, on LettermanRow.com, $1 for your first month, $1 for that story. Uh, there are three initial thoughts on what this means for Ohio State because I just kind of jotted down, like, you know, let me see if I can if I can get out the typewriter and get something quick up there about what is going through my head about this. But we need to know what's going through the 41-year vet's head. I mean, nobody knows this program better than Tim May. Tim May! Uh Tony Alford is leaving to become the running backs coach at the University of Michigan, leaving Ohio State. Um, not completely unprecedented like we talked about, but your initial thoughts to um, Ohio State now replacing a running backs coach mid-spring. Yeah, I'm just wondering uh, what uh, James Peoples and, uh, Cal, uh, you know, the, the the young men that came in in the, in the, in the winter, but also what uh, Quinshawn Judkins and Travion Henderson are thinking. It's more, it's more what they're thinking that I'm thinking. But, you know, it's really funny because uh, as we talked about, what, a month and a month and a half ago, uh, there seemed to be three guys on uh, Ryan Day's hit list <laughs> uh, coming out of the 2023 season. And now all three of those guys are gone, plus Corey Dennis, you know. And Corey, Corey Dennis was uh, maybe on the fence. But uh, it is interesting how things have come true in that regard. I think you agree with that, Spence. Because we talked about that a lot, but uh, uh, you've just, you know, in the spring, you know, what 
number number one, Ryan Day, uh, like like I said, we were hearing that this was a possibility two months ago. Not that he would go to Michigan, that uh, Tony Alford would go to Michigan, but there was a possibility uh, of this of this of Tony Alford not being on the staff anymore. Now to see it come to fruition, uh, basically during spring break with 13 practices left in the spring, you, you got to figure Ryan Day has something up his sleeve from the standpoint of a replacement. So there's probably another uh, large shoe to drop in this whole thing. That's that's what I'm thinking. Uh, the timing of it, though, is very interesting uh, because when you look at who just left Michigan without getting uh, basically uh, – uh, I'm not even sure what kind of review he got, but Mike Hart again, left everybody scratching their head, uh, scratching their head uh, of what last week. And a buddy of mine – uh, who covers who is behind the scenes a lot on a lot of this stuff says there's a there's a circling of the wagons at Michigan, and he wouldn't he wouldn't go into detail about what the circling of the wagons meant, but uh, it is interesting that Mike Hart, like I said, I mean he he bled maize and blue about as uh, thick as anybody uh, was basically let let go for one of another term, and now they're bringing in the running backs coach from Ohio State. The battle has been joined and then some in the game from uh, my perspective. Yeah, it definitely adds a wrinkle. You know, we were talking about a um, wrinkle. Shoot, the, this is like those pre pleated pants. We we were talking about how the rivalry lost to something. Uh, you know, Jim Harbaugh leaves Michigan. Uh, no more Urban Meyer on the sideline for Ohio State, obviously. No more Jim Harbaugh on the sideline. And you, you look at this rivalry and it's, you know, two guys who were promoted who, uh, you know, didn't necessarily grow up in the rivalry like Urban and, and Harbaugh did. Well, you need something to to spice up the rivalry again and keep this thing ablaze. Uh, how about Michigan poaching the longest tenured Ohio State uh, offensive assistant? I mean, it doesn't get any more cutthroat as far as the rivalry goes than that, Andy. Yeah, and, and Tim's mentioning, you know, the running backs in that room that you're thinking about. Dallin Hayden comes to mind for me, you know, someone that yeah. they agreed to, to redshirt him last year. And there was a bit of just controversy around that. Like, why do that with Dallin Hayden after such a successful end to his freshman year, starting in the Peach Bowl and then not really getting to play much. And then the game he does get to play in against Purdue, he kind of comes to the rescue again, like he did at Maryland the season prior. And then really we don't see him the rest of the year. And now, you know, I'm thinking what's going through his head because he trusted that plan with Tony Alford and Ryan Day. Now Tony Alford isn't there anymore. And, you know, if I'm down Hayden, I'm thinking like, OK, well, now where do I go from here? And what do I think of that last year? And it's just an interesting question, too, to throw in there, because that's the running back where I was kind of confused at what the plan was for him last year. And if I'm him now, I'm like, where do I go from here? I'm certainly a talent. And I think that's the most interesting thing about this whole thing is that there's so much talent in this room. This wasn't a departure because there wasn't talent in the room or because there was no good to come out of 2024 for the position group for Tony Alford. I mean, it's the opposite. I mean, this could be one of the great running back rooms in Ohio State history, really. And so now you have this change happening then, which I think makes it all the more interesting. Tim? Yeah, I Here's the thing. I have never, I mean, even talking to people, quote, behind the scenes, I have never quite understood the whole Dallin Hayden red shirt necessity of a year ago. And, you know, when you listen to people talk about the running backs room, maybe this is our fault because we do a lot of talk about the running backs. And uh, what we've been talking about are uh, Trayvon Henderson and Quinshawn Judkins and then the two freshmen. Uh, and Dallin Hayden always seems to get – left out of the conversation for some reason, you know, even by us. And, uh, and like you said, uh, uh, Andy, he's hit the, um, he's hit the, uh, he's hit the emergency, uh, uh, parachute drop a couple of times and done it in fine fashion for the Buckeyes. He's a bigger, stronger version of himself from two years ago when he was a freshman, he came in late and, uh, still showed some chops. So, uh, I'm, you know, I, it makes you wonder almost if there's going to be another shoe to drop in this whole uh, in this whole thing if you follow my drift. Uh, uh, because, uh, you know, obviously Michigan has had a few guys leave or, you know, have to exit the running backs room. And uh, they've got uh, – what's his name? Um, uh, ah, I'm drawing a blank here now. The, the good running – Edwards, Donovan the guy Edwards. that had the two big runs against Ohio State uh, two years ago. It looks like he's back, but he didn't have the year – you would have expected of him a year ago or, or this past season and stuff, but there may be some, uh, 
there's an opening or two you you would think in that in that realm. So you never count anything out in this uh, transfer portal uh, NIL era, and this is another example. But yes, we never got a a suitable explanation for Dallin Hayden from last year, including even in the bowl game. Uh, you know, just I, I'm not sure what what was going on there, and but evidently Ryan Day was not happy with some things that were going on with the running back room in some form or fashion, because like we pointed out, like I pointed out a minute ago, as we were talking about, it looked like T, uh, Tony Alford was on the hit list at the end of the season to begin with. Yeah. I mean, Tony Alford is going to inherit a pretty good room at Michigan. Donovan Edwards, Khalil Mullings. Um, you look at Jordan Marshall who spurned Ohio state and told Tony Alford no in order to go to Michigan. And now, in a weird twist of fate, Tony Alford will be the head will be the head man in the room for. Be Jordan careful Hall. who you spurn. Is that what you're trying to say? Be careful who you yeah. spurn. Go ahead. Yeah, because now he is, you know, Jordan Marshall is going to be coached by Tony Alford, which is just it's kind of crazy. Um, yeah, but uh, you know, there's going to be a lot of names thrown out there for Ohio State. We're here to break down, obviously, the Ohio State side of things. You can go elsewhere and get the Michigan side of things um, because Tony Alford is now on the other side of the rivalry um, for the Buckeyes. You have Quinchon Judkins, you have Trayvon Henderson, and Dallin Hayden, the top three, pretty much secured top three in that running back room. You have Sam Williams Dixon, and you have Jordan or James Peoples, excuse me, who are already on the roster, who are now trying to be developed in their freshman year. They left high school early in order to get that extra spurt of development here in the spring, and now they are without a position coach. This is a massive, massive undertaking here for Ryan Day to try to get this thing right and get it right quickly. Uh, because this is not just Quinchon Judkins and Trayvon Henderson and letting them know who's going to be like their boss for the next few months before they go to the NFL. It's also setting the program up for success because you have to have good running back play with Chip Kelly and Justin Fry in that run game for years to come. You have to have good running back play and the development of these guys is so important. This is, and so my point here is this is so big for Ryan day. You have to get this higher, right? There are plenty of names out there. Um, we will get the names soon, but Andy, do you agree? Like this is this is a really really important hire for Ryan Day. Well, absolutely. I mean, it's mid spring. You have to make this hire a good one. I mean, you don't have all the time in the world, and you have to make sure it's the right fit for this offense. But I do think you have a leg up with you know Justin Fry and Chip Kelly working together previously at UCLA. They go hand in hand in this run game. Look, Justin Fry has been the run game coordinator of late for Ohio State. Chip Kelly obviously knows the run game just in general, better than most in college football or just football in general. I mean, that is really his expertise. I think they'll be able to figure this out. And in the interim, you know, this is a chance for Ryan Day to work more hands-on with a chance for Chip Kelly and Justin Fry maybe to even help out a little bit. I mean, there, there's an opportunity here for what Ryan Day has been talking about, being the CEO of this team, taking a step back from the quarterbacks to kind of lend a hand a little bit while they're trying to hire someone into this role. Obviously, you have GAs working with these position groups as well that will help out. But this is an opportunity for him to do what he's been saying, you know, lend a hand where there needs to be some help, I guess, in this kind of situation. It's been special teams early in spring ball, but here you go with running backs. I wouldn't be surprised to see him before they hire the next head coach or the next running backs coach to be helping out with them. Tim? Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't even have, I mean, in my head, I have some guys that they, they might be interested in, but I'm not going to throw, I'm not going to throw people on top of the bus instead of under the bus <laughs> in this regard. But uh, it's just the timing of it is very curious. And uh, who drove that bus is, is, is what's interesting to me because uh, I had, like I said, I had a buddy of mine telling me something weird was going to happen over the, and this was like three weeks ago something weird was going to happen over the next two weeks, but he didn't delineate for me. You know, you really, you always like those kind of guys, right? But, uh, but this is, this is interesting because this isn't Tony Alford going to Michigan state or going to Eastern Michigan or Western Michigan and whatever Michigan's there are central Michigan, Northern Michigan. This is him going to Michigan. I was going to name them all off and really make people mad. Uh, your arch rival. And uh, you know, we've seen this happen in some ways, in some forms or fashion before, like I always remind everybody, Gary Moeller was a former captain at Ohio State, played under Woody Hayes and was a head coach at, at Michigan, uh, et cetera. Uh, so in that regard, it's interesting. In my opinion, it also serves the pot, like I said, of the game 
but just uh, in a uh, just in a focus sense on what this means to Ohio State, uh, I think Ryan Day will find a very good running backs coach uh, when this is all said and done. One who more maybe fits what he wants out of that running backs coach, whether it's from a an even more effective recruiter. Although I think, you know, when you miss out on guys, uh, when you miss out on guys for one for one reason or another, it's not always the assistant coach's fault who's recruiting them. We all know that, right? Um, and then number two, uh, Tony Alford has been, a, in my opinion, a quite effective running running backs coach when you just look at some of the guys he's helped bring along. Now, if you turn around now in retrospect and say, well, all those guys were talented, uh, what did he do for him? Well, that's not the way you look at it, you know. Jesse Owens was talented, but the, uh, the, Ohio, the Ohio State men's track coach way back then got a lot of credit. Let's put it that way. Bottom line is, uh, you heard what Ryan Day said way back in January. What's the most important thing he looks for in an assistant coach? And the very first thing he pointed out was recruiting. And so you look down those lines, who is the, who are the stoutest recruiters out there when it comes to running backs? You know, it looked like Mike Hart was pretty good. <laughs> but now he's no longer at Michigan. So, you know, I know we're talking in circles here to a certain extent because, you know, even though this isn't uh, this isn't stunning, it's still a little bit shocking of the timing of this of this situation. And like you like you pointed out, you've got uh, you've got a you've got a veteran running back, two re- veteran running backs in the Ohio State system in Travion Henderson and Dallin Hayden, who can lead in the way, lead the way in that room with Quinshawn Judkins one of the best running backs in the SEC the past two years, and then two extremely talented young freshmen. Like, I yeah, I think those are the guys who are probably getting the major part of the counseling right now of, even though they're on spring break, of of what's coming uh, in the in the door next. And uh, so Ryan Day is probably going to have to be dealing with that personally and, uh, to keep that straight. But I expect him to get a big-time running backs coach in some form or fashion over the next several weeks. Yeah, you've got to, again, you've got to make this higher count. And like you said, Tim, recruiting is so important. The shortcomings for Tony Alford were mostly on the recruiting trail. B. John Robinson was a silent commit and ends up going to Texas instead. He's now one of the best running backs in the NFL. He should have been at Ohio State. In an alternate university, he was at Ohio State. Uh, Jordan Lyle was just committed to Ohio State until he wasn't. Um, the, the crown jewel in the running back room of that class, even above a guy like James Peoples, who they really like, and even above a guy like Sam Williams-Dixon, who they really like, Jordan Lyle was slated to be like the guy in that 2024 recruiting class. Um, right. You know, Jordan Marshall is was the number one, one of the number one of the best players, excuse me, in Ohio and goes to Michigan instead of Ohio State. Why? Because Ohio State was late to the to the party on him and didn't didn't recruit him hard enough early enough. And so Jordan Marshall decided to go to Michigan instead. Um, you know, Tony Alford did a lot of great things for Ohio State. There were also some shortcomings, you know, and so now you've got to find a, a recruiter who can who is, a, a you know, a dogged recruiter and somebody who can coach the position and develop talent. Because the other shortcoming for Tony Alford was the fact that Trey Sermon was drafted in the third round, but he only spent five months at Ohio State or six months at Ohio State. J.K. Dobbins was drafted in the, in the second round, um, and he was recruited from Ohio State to the NFL by Tony Alford. From uh, high school to the NFL by Tony Alford. Mike Weber was drafted in the seventh round, um, and he never really had much of an NFL career. Um, to date, maybe, I don't know, something crazy could happen. But, you know, other than that, the running back position has not been pumping talent into the NFL like Ohio State wants it to be and like Ohio State, quite frankly, expects it to be. And so I think that's one of the big things is you have to be able to recruit. And there were inconsistencies, I'll say, not shortcomings, but inconsistencies in Tony Alford's recruiting. And you have to be able to develop. And there's been inconsistencies in Ohio State's ability to send running backs to the NFL who are ready to play in the NFL. And I think those are the two big keys for the next guy, Andy, is for you have to recruit guys from high school and put them in the NFL, plain and simple. Yeah, that's the pipeline for sure. And I think that if you're an Ohio State fan, you have to be confident, though, that Ryan Day will make the right hire here because of the hires that he's made this offseason. I mean, look at the offensive coordinator position. You make the hire Bill O'Brien. We all thought that was a home run. Okay, he leaves for Boston College. Then you get Chip Kelly, arguably a better hire, better fit. You don't retain Perry Eliano. You bring on Macarary, who it's still yet to be seen how he'll do in the recruiting field. 
but he did help out a little bit with Caleb Downs, even though that Tim Walden definitely spearheaded that commitment. But still, he's down there in, in Georgia helping make that happen. And and certainly you we'll see how that turns out. But that could be an upgrade there at safety. And then you don't retain Corey Dennis, but you have Chip mm-hmm. Kelly, who's now coaching quarterbacks, and you promote James Laurinaitis, the linebackers coach, which has been perceived to be a good move as well on staff. So pretty much every move they've made this offseason has either been a home run or could potentially be a home run down the line. And so you have to be confident that Ryan Day will make another one of those moves now, either an upgrade or something that, that could be an upgrade in the future. So, you know, I feel like every time that something's happened for Ohio State and you're like, well, I didn't expect that to happen this offseason. It's ended up actually turning out better than where they were before. So we'll see what happens this time, but that could certainly happen again. Yeah, I'll, I'll say this too, man. This team went 11-2 and two last year, lost its last two games, as we well know. <laughs> I, I'm said repeating the obvious. But Ryan Day, man, that, he's revamped this staff. <laughs> you know, it's uh, he's not sitting on status quo. He didn't blame it all on one guy or the other. Uh, if, in fact, blame is the correct term here, but put the onus on one guy or the other. Uh, he put it on a group, and uh, it's, you know, we've talked about this before, three straight losses to Michigan, and then uh, and then the fact you haven't played for the Big Ten Championship now for three straight years, uh, you know, th- clearly the pressure is there. We've seen it bubble up now uh, in, in some guys that we, you know, I, I personally liked everybody, you know, who, who's been let go in one form or fashion. Tony Alford wasn't let go, but Tony Alford uh, obviously got the message. Let's put it that way. Right. And, uh, and, or in some frank conversations, I'm sure with Ryan day and, and, and life moves on, the beat goes on. And uh, you know, you, it's more, you looking, the more you're looking in the rear view mirror, the more you're likely to hit something. And uh, Ryan day's looking straight ahead. It looks like uh, in through the windshield of this thing and trying to build that juggernaut, you know, that, that people want or expect for some reason uh, for Ohio State football to be in 2024. And this is just another, uh, I don't know if this is a speed bump or if this is coming out of the pits uh, hell bent. You know, it looks like it's more like coming out of the pits hell bent with new tires. Yeah. So I had to get a motor racing analogy in there. Go ahead now. That's why we let you go, Tim. We just let you, we we let you get one in, you get (laughs) one free one. You, you Wait, gotta, what does that mean? <laughs> you get one free one, and then we and then we charge you a per yeah. auto racing reference. Yeah, uh, nitro. At, from there on after, um, we'll. There's an elephant in the room. We have to adju- address it uh, right off the bat. I mean, let's be honest. There's one name that everybody wants to be the next running backs coach at Ohio State. The problem is he's currently a head coach, and you have to wonder if he wants to be a running backs coach. Not everybody, even if it's your alma mater, wants to go from being a head coach to being a position coach. So whether Eddie George wants to be the next Ohio State running backs coach is not a matter of money. Ohio State has money. They don't get that money. You know, Ohio State running backs coach makes more than the Tennessee State head coach does. That's just a fact. Um, And so it's not about whether they can lure Eddie George away or whether they want to lure Eddie George away. It's whether probably Eddie George wants to be lured away and wants to go from head coach to position coach at his alma mater. That's a question he's going to have to answer. And the, the, the list obviously starts there because he's a Heisman Trophy winner, an alum. You want Buckeyes to coach Buckeyes. Again, he won the Heisman Trophy, for God's sakes. He's one of the greatest players in the history of the program. So obviously fans are going to point to him and say, that's who we want as our next running backs coach. Does Eddie George want to be the running backs coach is the bigger question. And the names and the lists start with Eddie George, and then they go from there, Andy. Yeah, for sure. And I think that's going to be the next 24 hours for us is trying to dissect who could be in that potential list, I guess. But it, it's difficult at this point because we're so late in the cycle. I mean, it's not even a cycle anymore. We're, this is spring football. And we talk about transfers leaving late. I mean, this is a whole different thing with coaches and and just with the offensive coordinator search, that was already an interesting situation in itself. But think about how quickly they hired Chip Kelly. And Ryan Day had contingency plans for that. And that was something they were prepared for when Bill O'Brien took that job at Boston College. So it wouldn't surprise me if they already have a contingency plan and this hire comes quicker than we're expecting, You know, maybe in the next couple of days, because it seems like 
these are things they're prepared for. I mean, this was not something that I'm sure that they're shocked about. As Tim mentioned, this was something that could have happened even a couple months ago. So I'm sure there are backup plans and maybe not even backup plans, just contingency plans is a better way to describe it. So I wouldn't be surprised by the end of the week, you know, if there's a new hire made. Huh. Yeah, that would be moving quickly, but uh, it is the middle of spring and you got to get something going in that regard. Uh, now, the Eddie George thing is interesting to me because, you know, he's been on my show here several times and uh, I go whack a long way with Eddie George. Number one, number two, I just keep thinking about what Alabama did. You know, Kalen DeBoer went out and got a couple of head, standing head coaches in, in FBS standing head coaches, not FCS, which is where uh, Tennessee State resides. Uh, Eddie's been working his rear end off to get that program, uh, to rebuild that program. You know, he's got, I think, you know, former Ohio State running back Pepe Pearson is one of the guys working for him, for example, or at least was, and uh, uh, haven't checked their roster lately. But uh, Eddie's, Eddie would be an interesting hire in a lot of respects because, I, uh, you know, he's a thoughtful guy. But the big question for me would be whether he'd want to leave, not leave Tennessee State, but leave Nashville, you know, because he's really liked it down there, for example. Uh, and uh, but don't don't ever say never anymore, because like you just said, if, if money is not the object anymore when it comes to hiring assistant football coaches, Ohio State is in there throwing punches with the, with the best of them now. In that regard, forget about the NIL. We're talking about assistant coaches salaries. It's crazy. And you're right. I mean, they could pay him immediately more than what he's making at Tennessee State, probably double it, maybe even triple it. Uh, but that would be quite an interesting staff if suddenly a Heisman Trophy winner was on your staff. And, you know, we'll run that by Eddie as soon as we're done with this. I'll, I'll just leave it at that. But but the bottom line is he will get like 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 Andy just pointed out, you know, following up what we were talking about earlier. I'm sure Ryan Day had some people in mind back in December when he was going through in his mind what needed to be changed or adjusted on this staff. And like I said, we kept hearing the name uh, Tony Alford, which meant someone other than us was, was thinking about meaning Ryan day was thinking about some kind of plans down the road in that regard. And so it'll be, it'll be very interesting to see how quickly he does respond to this. Yeah. There are some superstar running backs coaches in Ohio state. Again, Tim, like you said, run, money, money is not an option. No. Money is not an object for Ohio State. Do, do the Buckeyes look at like a t t t if I can get the name right, Tashard Choice, who's the running backs coach at Texas? Pardon me. Uh, you know he's a very good running backs coach. He's a good recruiter. Um, you know is that a like a superstar name that Ohio State would want to go after? There are names all over the country. Um, you know, CJ Spiller is the running backs coach at Clemson. He's a Clemson alum though. That's, you know, and these are not names that I'm, that I'm talking about, but like what I'm trying to convey here is there are superstars who coach running backs. Cadillac Williams was at Auburn and there was a mutual yeah. part of the ways there. He was at his alma mater. He's out of a job right now. These are not, again, it's not a candidates list. A candidates list will be on lettermanrow.com this afternoon. This is not one of those, you know, Matt Merritt at Miami just got hired from South Florida. He coached at Ohio state for the national championship running back in 2014. He was at South Florida, just got hired at Miami. And, you know, is that somebody that fits what Ohio state's looking for? That is more, way more important than, are you a good recruiter? Uh, can you get guys to the NFL? Um, you know, it's gotta be a fit and, Chip Kelly and Justin Fry run a very certain, uh, really good run scheme. And I think more than anything, you need to find a guy who can fit that, what Justin Fry and Ryan Day and Chip Kelly look for in what they look for in their running backs and find a coach who fits that mold, who can also recruit and who also fits the culture of Ohio State and who also can get guys to the NFL. It's a lot of things that have to fit into this, but there are a lot of guys who can do it, Andy. and. You know, we'll do a little bit of research here and get a list together. I'm not asking you to, to throw out any more names, but like the fit is so important in this specific hire, especially for how late it is. And the short term fit, too, because you're dealing with two running backs who are going to the NFL next year and you, you want to figure out a way to get them what they want. I mean, Quinshawn Judkins came here, yes, to split the backfield with Trayvon Henderson and, and take a selfless approach and and win. But they also need to be fed, both those guys and Alan Hayden. And so you need someone that's open-minded about how to split carries in that backfield. Like for the short term, those guys need to be worked with. Like there needs to be some kind of plan for that trio, especially, and even working in those freshmen, I guess, a little bit to help their development. But especially the two at the top of that list, 
Travion Henderson, Quinshaw Judkins. Like, I'm not saying they're on the ground floor picking coaches here. I'm just saying that I'm sure their input will be necessary because those are the guys right now for this team. I mean, this is a big – I mean, Denzel Burke said it. It's, it's national championship or bust. And every player and every position group is part of that equation here. And the running backs are at the forefront of this offense, especially with Chip Kelly as the offensive coordinator. And those two guys need to be happy. So you need to find a way for a coach that fits in, yes, with the culture of Ohio State, but in the short term, a way to use those two running backs effectively. Yeah. I agree. Um, I just um, I just keep going back to, I mean, you know, there, there are a lot, a lot of – a lot of guys can tailor their coaching. I mean, I don't think you have to get anybody who's, you know, exactly frame for frame in line with, uh, with those, with, with Ryan day and, uh, and chip Kelly and, uh, uh, and Justin Fry in the offense they're running. Cause anybody can learn any new thing. I mean, coaches go from one NFL NFL team to another, you know, on a conveyor belt kind of uh, situation. Um, so I think it's more, more of if, what was the what was the one thing you had a beef with with Tony Alford more than anything else? You know Ryan Day, and uh, it looks like it was probably in the recruiting realm. So that's got to be number one on his list. An effective recruiter who also is a hell of a running backs coach. And believe me, there are there are plenty of them out there. You know to to look at. I mean, there's no there's not that perfect hire. You know, like like we like like Andy pointed out a while ago, Bill O'Brien was good, looked like almost a perfect hire to step in and be the offensive coordinator for Ohio State as Ryan Day steps away from the play calling. Boom! Three weeks later, he's gone. Now they've got an even more perfect looking hire in <laughs> uh, yeah. Chip Kelly. So you 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 take the round peg and you make it fit in the square hole as long as that guy can recruit and recruit at the level you expect him to. But fellas, I want to tell you this: judging guys. Also, by effectiveness in recruiting, nobody gets everybody, you know, when it comes to recruiting, especially when you're recruiting guys that the other blue bloods in America are recruiting. Uh, eventually, that young man who may be sitting in Georgia and having Alabama and, and Texas and Miami of Florida and Ohio State and Michigan and USC all recruiting him, eventually he makes up his mind. That doesn't mean the guys that were re recruiting him were all awful, and the guy that got him was the greatest uh, coach known to man. It just meant whimsic whimsic whimsically. There, that was easy for me to say the third time I tried it. Whimsically, he picked that team, you know, for whatever reason. So, uh, you know, just a guy that can relate to, relate to young men has been effective in producing talent, but also can recruit. Those usually kind of go hand in hand. And uh, Ryan Day will find somebody that fits that bill. It is now on. Ryan. I think. Yeah, it's now on Ryan Day to find somebody who fits that bill because we are two practices into spring ball and Ohio State is now an assistant coach. This is a wild development on a Wednesday afternoon, not something I expected. Um, but that's why we do it. And that's why we do it 365 days a year, because Ohio State football doesn't take a day off. You know, the Buckeyes, some guys I'm sure are down in uh, down in Florida for spring break. Some guys are at home on spring break. And Tony Alford is now heading to Ann Arbor, Michigan. Uh, head on up 23, Andy. I think Buckeyes fans will uh, let let the door hit you on the way out now, at this point since, since uh, the rivalry has a new wrinkle. Tony Alford heading to Ann Arbor. Ohio State going to play Michigan in late November. Tony Alford will be on the sideline in the horseshoe, but it will be on the visiting sideline, which is just going to be a wild sight. Tim May, the 41-year vet, I'm sure he'll be there because he covers everything for Ohio State. 41 years of doing it. He does it 365 days a year at LettermanRoad.com. Andy Backstrom does it as well, 365 days a year at LettermanRoad.com. Andy's going to get to the Big Ten tournament. Tim's going to get to, uh, I'm sure, a rousing round of golf. He played the Ridge yesterday, uh, shot 88. He claims he shot a net 84 because he made some friends. That's okay. He's similar right. to Tom. He does what he wants. You throw my handicap in there. I think I shot 59 yesterday. Well, that's right. There you go. That's what you should be telling people, Tim. You got a round of golf to get to. I've got it. Yeah. Well, my phone's blowing up just like y'all's phones are blowing up. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, they may hire this new head. They may hire this new running backs coach in about 20 minutes. No, I'm just joking. Who knows? I'm sorry. Didn't mean to interrupt your finish there. No, that's all right, Tim. So Andy's going to head to the Big Ten tournament. Tim's going to get to his round of golf. He's going to get to the putting green. And I'm going to go work on a list of candidates to replace Tony Alford because he's heading to Michigan. Letterman Row, 365 days a year. $1 for your first month. Go there right now at lettermanrow.com. That's right, $1 for your first month. We'll see you guys over there. And we'll see you guys back when Ohio State hires a new running backs coach. I'm sure we'll have to break it down.